All right, what is up, my friends? We are here on the eve of perhaps the most exciting thing to happen to Magic, honestly, maybe ever. The Mythic Invitational is tomorrow. That's right, tomorrow we have a special Wednesday, right? Wednesday? What day is it? Wednesday video this week. I was sick last week, so Monday's video got a little uh, put on hold. This ended up working out a lot better because Mythic Invitational is starting tomorrow. Million dollar prize pool, the biggest stage, PAX East. I'll be in attendance at PAX East. Unfortunately, I'm not playing in a tournament, but I'll be there to uh, to hang out, root everybody on, and just, of course, enjoy PAX East, which is a great event. And million dollars on the line, esports, the future for Magic, and super, super exciting. The format is best of one duo standard, which puts best of one at the forefront and best of one of course one of the possible game modes on arena we talked about that previously and duo standard is basically just a best of one game with with a deck a best of one game with a different deck everyone brings two decks and then a third game with a random choice of either deck so no sideboarding it's technically a match but you're effectively playing best of one and we're doing a best of one preview today because best of one's kind of unexplored, honestly. Um, it's been poked at a little bit on the arena ladder, but not a lot of big time results in best of one. So we're going to give a, a preview of the format today and going over all the possible decks we're likely to see and then possible to see. So first things first, best of one, um, the opening hand algorithm, for those who don't know. Arena draws two opening hands and picks the one with the best land to spell ratio, meaning in best of one, you don't mulligan very often and your hands are usually pretty good. So aggro decks and proactive decks are the order of the day. Uh, in best of one, it's risky to have cards like Lava Coil or Negate or cards that are a little more focused um, on doing one thing well that you would sideboard out are hard to play because they're just dead. You know, you have, you have Lava Coil in your deck and you just draw it against your Esper Control opponent. Sorry, you just mulliganed. You know, so cards like that are difficult and then strategies that are reactive are difficult as well because if you have the wrong answers, you can't sideboard and fix it. So number one public enemy is Mono Red. So Mono Red Aggro, probably the number one uh, enemy going into, going into a tournament. This is the baseline deck. It is good. It is fast. It is aggressive. Um, gets to play 19 lands, abuse the opening hand algorithm a little bit, and then all of its removal spells also just remove players from the game. So very, very safe place to be. This is definitely the de facto best deck and safest deck and the deck you most often see on Arena. Best of one on the ladder. And we're going to start here. Like I said, we're going to play one game with each deck. Just kind of go over each deck as like a preview. And Mono Red, like I said, really is the baseline of the format. Um, again, the biggest thing, I think, is the ability for all of the removal spells to also double as burn spells. So when your Wizard's Lightning isn't good at killing creatures, you can just point it upstairs and turn on your Spectacle cards and so on and so forth. Everything works together pretty well here. And then, of course, the proactive plan means that even if you're not ready for what your opponent is doing, you might just kill them before they get to do it. So, we're going to start here. Mono Red, best of one. And uh, this is definitely definitely the baseline for the format. So, ranked, best of one. Again, we're playing one game with each deck, ten decks on tap. We're going to start with the more likely tier one decks down through... More fringe decks and a couple of metagame breakers as well. Alright, so Shock, Strike, Light Up a Sage, Wizards Lightning, and three lands. No creatures is awkward, but I think the ability to go Shock, Light Up a Sage on two is like probably good enough. Uh, if my opponent's playing creatures, I get to kill them. Not an ideal hand. Definitely with these red decks, you are looking to try and put some sort of recurring damage source in play, but I think Light Up a Stage makes a Santa keep. We're going to keep. And of course, if our opponent is playing a creature deck, we have the ability to uh, play a little more controlling role with a few kill spells and a card draw spell. 
Not surprising at all. Um, so they're just playing a firebrand and passing, which is interesting. Um, and we draw a frenzy. So basically our big question here is if you want to cast shock into light up a stage or just play a land and say go. Um, light up stage on turn two can be a little tough because if you hit two two mana spells, you can't always cast them all. Um, I think we're just going to play a land and say go here. We have, we just drew frenzy too, which definitely changes the texture of our hand a lot because it wants, it incentivizes us to want to just kind of trade resources and trade resources and just play frenzy on turn four or five and then get all those resources back. So lines up well with our removal heavy hand. Opponent chose to not attack, possibly playing around shock or trying to set up their own spectral cards next turn. All right, yeah, so they are, I mean, they're willing to trade their firebrand for essentially nothing, it's fine with us. They light up a stage, they hit another light up a stage and a lava runner, so that is very, very good. But they are down a card, don't forget. So they are, right now this first light up a stage is just turning on, or making up for the lost card from Firebrand, which they just essentially did one. They got basically gut shot at us. For all you modern players out there. All right. Um, we're just gonna shock here. It's more, more mana efficient to lightning strike, but we gotta make sure we can kill uh, Goblin Chain Rulers, things of that nature. All right, so drawing a Pyromancer is it's fine. This allows us to cast Wishes Lightning as well. Could cast Light Up a Stage here. Um. Actually, maybe we just cast light up a stage. Yeah, we're gonna light up a stage. If they have a chain whirler, it's pretty annoying, but let's just get our, our light up a stage going. Try to make some land drops here. Alright, so shock, wizard's lightning. Can be awkward if they kill this, which they probably will, but. Sure. Right. Chain whirler wanted to swing your cards in the matchup. Alright, drawing a land is perfect. So we get to Wizards Lightning, the Goblin Chain Whirler. I guess we're just gonna shock them, otherwise the shock goes away. So not not pretty, but it's fine. Four lands, frenzy, two kill spells. Pretty happy at the moment. They actually didn't even cast their early light up stage too, which is pretty uh, interesting. So we could just slam frenzy here. Um, we close off our hand, but it looks like their hand's pretty reactive too. So, yeah, we're just going to fire away here. It's like... He's playing the land. Yeah, playing the land is actually better. So we're looking to draw one drop, then hit a land up the top. Alright, land on top is fine. Alright, so they're trying to kill us. Some of these mono red lists play Risk Factor instead of Frenzy to be more aggressive. Alright, looks like they're just frenzying. Alright, so... Let's get the ball rolling here. Not bad so far. Steam can. <clears throat> Hard cast skewer. Fantastic. Light up a stage. Also fantastic. So we actually have them dead if we sack the frenzy, but let's just keep casting spells. I'm going to light up a stage and a mountain. Skewer the critics. That's pretty good. Upstairs. So now we have another... Alright, so there's I can see it, sure. We have another mountain on top. We could have used the light up a stage from our light up a stage to clear it, which is pretty cool, too. So, going to be a very common matchup at the Mythic Invitational. Mono Red versus Mono Red. Mono Red is definitely the baseline level zero deck of the format for sure. So... Other aggro decks, um, again, monocolored aggro, it's just smooth, it's fast, it's consistent, it has a proactive plan, it does its thing. And I think White Weenie is also going to be very heavily played. Um, these decks are not splashing a color because usually in, in standard they splash a color for a sideboard uh, card, like Negate or things like that. And they are just, once again, balls to the wall. Woohoo! Let's go, let's attack. Um, 18 one drops. Um, 
a couple hunted witness in here, not seen as much in best of three, but when everyone's playing aggro decks, they are quite good. Also fine against Esper Control, so pretty reasonable card. A card that's very bad against mid-range decks, which are not very popular in best of one. Uh, Tithe Taker is fantastic. No Danto Vanguards, because again, with the metagame being very, very aggressive, um, Danto Vanguard can be a liability in those matchups, and usually your Esper Control decks are going to have a good amount of Moment of Cravings, things of that nature, so it's not even that durable. Um, Unbreakable Formation, another card, just keep the linear strategy going. Um, just attack, 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 basically. You know, um, there's no sideboarding, no one's bringing an extra removal against you, so you'd want to keep your game one plan as powerful as possible. Only three copies of Tribunal, because you just can't afford to draw too many kill spells in your control matchups, which is a lot of attention in, in Best of One, it, where you just can't play that many actual removal spells that are only removal spells, because you just want to have enough threats to kill the control decks. And even though this can kill a Teferi or a Search for Escanta, um, if you draw too many of these, you're just not going to win. So, White Weenie, Old Faithful, um, our second deck on the docket today in Best of One. Again, I think Best of White Weenie and Mono Red are going to be very, very popular. You know, anyone who's not sure what they want to do, just get your opponent dead, you know? Um, a lot of the pros have been kind of complaining about Best of One, you know, how it's very swingy and stuff. Um, but in some ways, it's just best to just embrace it. You know, if you have to just play your aggressive deck, just play your aggressive deck. If you try and get too cute, you might just get run over, so. Alright, one drop, one drop, two drop, formation locks it on. Looks perfect to me. The old snub-a-dub. The white decks can be a little soft to the mono red decks. Uh, Chain Whirler, of course, is quite good against them, but the extra counters from, from, from formation help that a little bit. And of course, Loxodon does as well. Winning a die roll is pretty huge. I know, but that's one of the been, been one of the biggest complaints. Um, people have been saying that, that you know the they've been keeping track, and the player on the play has been winning, you know, fifteen percent more often than the player on the draw. Um, so let's need a guild gate. Okay, that is exactly what we do not have in our docket because it is pretty slow against these uh, aggro decks. But um, with the opening hand smoother, making sure everyone's hands are quite good, and everyone focused on playing aggressive decks, being on the play is seemingly very, very important. Um, which is not, you know, not great, but nature of the beast a little bit. I'm not sure when the, la when the last time they did a play draw stats in uh, constructed, like, best of three tournaments was. They used to keep those stats pretty often, actually. Okay, so we are concerned with the card Gates of Blaze, of course, because that card is quite good against uh, what we're trying to do here. Leaving up Unbreakable Formation, however, is pretty conservative. Um, could just go Snubhorn into Venerated Loxodon here. Um, if they have Gates of Blaze and a land, though, it just kills everything we have, which is terrible. Um, at the same time, leaving up Unbreakable Formation is like a weird counterspell. I don't think we have enough pressure to do that yet. So this is a pretty hard spot, honestly. The so problem is if we just attack for four and say go, we may not get out ahead fast enough to actually kill them. And we're going to leave too many cards rotting in our hand. Um, I think we're just going to play the Tithe Taker. I think we should play everything, actually. They have to actually have the Gates of Blaze. If they don't, they're just dead, and if they do, we have two flying tokens, at least. And the Snowboard Sentry's not getting much better. If they had Gates of Blaze, we're never going to hit the uh, City's Blessing anyway, so... And if we get to untap here... We probably have win the game with two essential counter spells for Gates of Blaze. So, if they have double Gates of Blaze, they probably just can't win. But sometimes in Magic, you just can't win. So, all right. So this is this is the ideal scenario for us now. We're probably going to destroy them. But I should like to draw a land here. History, but all, yeah. So we get him for six. 
counter, and then yeah, this, this is pretty reasonable actually. Stack with everything, say go. We have formation to counter a Gates of Blaze, then we untap and just cast formation, and we have enough, enough damage to kill them, so. Unbreakable formation, weird pseudo counter spell. It's also, of course, fantastic when you're just uh, casting it your main phase, which is what you usually do with the card, but. These Gates decks uh, seem too slow for standard, honestly. Like, tra tra traditional best of three standard. Uh, they do not seem very uh, very exciting in best of one. Benoish Marshall. So, Unbreakable Formation allows us to attack for three, four, five, six, seven. Puts them to two. They block. Yeah, that works for me. Because that way, if they have a Gates of Blaze, we'll get two tokens and kill them. Revitalize. So I guess if they have that plus Gates of Blaze, we don't necessarily kill them yet. We'll be a little bit short. Alright, alright. We are currently one short of killing them. Question is now what do we play? Formation can counter Gates of Blaze, but we need to actually have enough stuff in play for it to matter. Putting them to three is not great. Now they're getting into a range where they can start casting actual Hydroid Graces that matter. Um, this might actually be a like a develop our board kind of turn. Formation is definitely very, very awkward when you use just like a counter spell. And we can't spell into Loxodon. Alright, I think we're just gonna history here. We don't play around Gates of Blaze super well, regardless. This sets up lethal for next turn with formation. If they have Gates of Blaze, we'll at least have be putting a creature in play off History Banalia. Okay. Why hasn't the guild summit triggered yet? There it is. So they go like the gain three life land plus gates of blaze here. Could be a problem. Not sure what they're thinking about. I mean, you either got gates of blaze or you don't. Okay, you're dead. Oh, that's a card. Okay, so not dead yet. Still staying alive by the tiniest of margins. Um, so I think we're going to leave up Unbreakable Formation. We can cast Hunted Witness. We can actually just cast Hunted Witness and cast Venerated Lock. Yeah, we're going to do that, actually. Play Hunted Witness. Play Venerated Locks it on. And then this sets up very, very nicely for next turn. Next turn we have a attack for a, a basically a bajillion. Plus they have Gateway Angel. It's a disaster, but they might have cast that last turn if they had it. 
They are drawing more cards. We'll see. There's a lot of cards. I'm not gonna lie. There you go. Plaza of Harmony into Gateway Angel. Yeah, no blocks here. They're really holding on by a thread. Alright, Gates of Blaze. Indestructible, and that should probably do it. So, Unbreakable Formation. Not ideal as far as like countering a Wrath of God, but doing the work, doing the work. It's good, you know, a card like that is good because it's a card like Venerated Loxodon is not as good against Esper Control because it's not good against Wraths. So a card like Unbreakable Formation, which is really good against the Creature Mirrors and then also really good against Wrath of Gods is a nice best of one card. So why we need will probably also be very popular. Now the third monocolored aggro deck I believe is not going to be very popular at all. Of course the deck that won the uh, Resic Myth Mythic Championship mono blue aggro um, is a deck that is very good at punishing decks when they stumble, very good against clunkier decks, against mid-range decks, against control decks, against combo decks. Definitely not super good against monocolor aggro decks. Um, if all of your opponents are playing white weenie and mono red, playing mono blue is not great. However, it is quite good against Esper Control. Um, the problem is that having the right answers can be tough. So for Essence Capture against Esper Control, Dive Down against Mono White, you know, it can be a little tough. Um, definitely not sure if his list is ideal, but um, we're going to go to spin. This set could be an interesting metagame choice if you if people feel like everyone's trying really hard to beat the aggro decks and they want a deck that can beat the decks that are beating the aggro decks. This could be that deck, but I don't expect this deck to do particularly well as the third entry in the monocolor trifecta. Um, people will play it for sure, and it is definitely good, but uh, it just seems to be a little too poor against decks that get on the board very fast and have very proactive plans. But Let's give it a spin and see how it goes. Obsession, one land, no one drop. Fortunately, we can't keep this one. Uh, I don't think we really keep this one either. We have to find a land in our first two draw steps. And even then, a trickster with obsession on it's not even good. That's not great. Um, yeah, alright. I mean, I think at this point we're just going to keep... Maybe we could have kept the last one. A lot's got to go right. We could draw a one drop too with the last hand, but I don't know. We're going to keep the top. Swamp. Duress. Alright. Well, let's just draw a land and then a lot of spells. Duress, definitely a playable card. Best of one. Even the uh, creature decks have a... Uh, that's really bad. Not a, thing you, not, not a thing you want to see when you mulligan to five on the play when your opponent has turn one discard spell, turn two discard spell. But Duress is quite good. You know, the, even the aggressive decks have Burn Spells, Frenzies, History Banalias, and so on and so forth. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to be dispatched very quickly here. Um, we're going to play Herald. They have Thief of Sanity on three. Thief of Sanity is not a very popular card in Best of One because it's so bad against Mono Red. It's so bad against... It's actually fine against Mono White, but it's specifically very, very bad against Mono Red. Man. Nice mulligan to five, Jim. Miss Cole Carol, you got some work to do, my friend. Stop me. Trickster? Nah. I think it's Obsession or Bust. 
the old Peter Mander. Yeah, get back here. Scared of hostage taker. Maybe nickel balls. Lava coil. All right. All right, that's actually really good. So the extra opt gives us a, a better shot at Terramander. Maybe we keep the spell pierce. Spell pierce is like, because if they have a contempt or something, we can counter it and keep our Terramander alive. All right, I guess we'll keep it. I'm really thrilled about it. We currently have four spells in the bin. Okay, we drew a Herald too. We actually just hold on to Terramander and play the Herald instead. Terramander certainly gets better as the game goes on. Kindling Phoenix? Yikes. That is not good. Alright, I think we're just drawing cards now. We are past the point of, uh... Yeah, we're we're past the point of basically everything here, I think. Kindling Phoenix, very, very good card against um Mono Blue. A card that gets better in best of one also because it's just so hard to play the card lava coil on your deck. You're just dead too often. No fire. Yeah. I would say we're in pretty big trouble here. Get the Terramander, hopefully defend it with Dive Down, and maybe evolve it. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Dive Down is seven, so we will be able to evolve next turn if we get to use this Dive Down. I mean, Double Terramander, I feel like, does give us a chance. But Devil. Mm. So, I mean, sure, there's another kill spell, sure. All right, this is the Grixis mid-range deck that's been floating around. No fire, no steam. Yeah, now we're, now we're pretty much dead. We just can't get ahead of the Angrath. We can adapt Terramander, but they can just take it and attack us with it. Yeah, we're just dead. All right. Obviously not a, not a great representative game there. I mean, unfortunately, though, that's kind of best of one in a nutshell, though, is that, you know, we play Magic best of three usually because sometimes you just lose a game of Magic. You mulligan to five and they have two discard spells and you just get destroyed, you know. Um, but that's best of one. It's it's kind of scary, but... And again, of course, they'll be playing duo standard in the Invitational, so it's it's a match of best of one, essentially. So even even in a spot like that, you still have, a, you still have two more games to play. So... Next kind of tier one deck, if you will, um, I think is definitely Esper Control. Um, this is the deck that it's funny because it it's it's almost like a a cheese strategy. You know, one of the things the best of one is you can't sideboard. So if your opponent brings some sort of weird cheesy deck to try and cheese you out, you can't sideboard. So they have no creatures, or they have only enchantments, or they have some sort of weird thing going on that you would be able to bring in dresses and negates against, or board out your removal spells. You know, you can't do that. And Esper Control kind of does that. It plays zero creatures, so all of your opponent's cast downs and lava coils and so on and so forth are terrible. And it just wants to sit there and draw cards and win the game. Eventually, you can win with a Teferi Tuck, and then you also have a one Kaya, which is just a good card against all the monocolor decks anyway. And then I like this one copy of Warrant Warden a lot as uh, just an extra way to win the game. Um, make a 4-4 token. But... Primary win condition is just Teferi Tuck. Just ultimate Teferi. Exile all their permanents. Keep putting Teferi back on top. I know it's not very exciting. Uh, Teferi being able to target itself is egregious. Just a terrible design mistake, but that's what it is. So, moment of craving necessary for the mono red. Uh, Kaya helps there too. Negate's definitely a reasonable main deck card. Um, and yeah. 
You all know what Esper Control is. Let's run that one next. Kai is definitely a card that gets a lot better in, uh, in best of one. It is good against the monocolored aggro decks, good against mono red, and then it's also a threat against control decks. So it's not dead in that scenario. Sand isn't great, but I don't think you can mulligan it. We have turn two negate, counter a history of Benalia or a light up a stage or something like that. And then we have an insight to fairy. Insight's another cool card in best of one because you can discard your bad cards in certain matchups for value, which is great. All right. So probably mono red, but all right, we'll run this one back, I guess. Because our opponent just kept the one lander. People, players on the ladder are often quick to concede because just playing more games is usually valuable than playing a game you're probably going to lose. You know, if you feel like you're 5% to win a game or 10% to win a game, your 5 or 10 minutes is better spent just queuing up a new game than just sitting there and losing. So you see that reasonably often. This hand is significantly worse. Um, if one of these was a a dual land, I could I could play Search for Escanta on turn two. I'm okay keeping a two lander with Search on the draw, but it's not. So we need to mulligan, unfortunately. Mm. I can bottom this. Try to draw a fourth land or some card draw, or an early removal spell of some kind. Our hand is especially bad against Mono Blue. Huh. <laughs> I would say we are probably in trouble. Ooh, no. Okay, that makes things much better for us. Looks like they're just playing the, uh, some sort of Is It Phoenix or Is It Drake's deck. Control is usually pretty good against those decks. Bin Shock, Bin Opt. Alright. Fourth land's kind of nice. Uh, it's kind of like they have Spell Pierce in their deck, which is obviously good against our Wrath, but they don't play a Drake here. I'm pretty happy. Cool. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, Terramander is definitely looking like it's going to be pretty big already. It's got one more card to go for a uh, one-mana adapt, which is actually really good for us because they can't one-mana adapt yet. So, Negate's okay. Going to be absorbing pretty aggressively here. Just need to cast our spells. That's interesting. All right. Five is not a small amount. If they have a spell pierce here, they could definitely be uh, punishing us. We, we have to cast Wrath here, I think. Can't afford to take another five. Alright. That plays. No spell pierce means our next Wrath will resolve too, probably. Which is good. So they have like a crackling drake or something here. We need to draw a kill spell or two. Um, these extra negates are not really doing a ton at the moment. All right. So that's pretty interesting. Um, we could thought erasure would negate up. We'll take five, but that actually feels pretty nice. Yeah, because otherwise, if we just wrath here, they just play another threat, and we're in big trouble. So. They're playing a preemptive dive down on their Terramander. That's great. No kill spells here. Their hand is Enigma Drake, dive down, opt. So I think we're pretty happy just taking the Enigma Drake. 
Kaya. Kaya's... If we could Kaya and Negate in the same turn, that would be awesome. But we can't, and they have Dive Down. So I think we are just going to bottom this. The life gain's not bad either, though, actually. Um, we Wrath, and we play Kaya. But if they draw a threat in the next two turns... Can we just keep it, actually? Yeah, let's just keep it. This is going to play out. They're going to end step Opt. We're going to negate it. They're going to adapt Terra Mander Attack for five, and they have Dive Down, and one fresh card. And... They're not going to opt. They already had Hexproof. Why do they need to leave Dive Down up? Right. Well, then we're, we're going to negate this now, so... There's no more waiting around. We are... We need to trade off our resources because we have all counter spells in our end. So, don't have drawn spell pierce, please. Alright. And now, don't draw a threat for. Give, give us a one turn respite here. Thank you. Thought erasure. We're gonna wait. Wanna absorb. Be absorbing pretty aggressively here, also. We draw a land, we can set up for Thought Erasure Absorb. Yeah, it's pretty easy to absorb. Excellent. Still on a land, but alright. That's fun. Without um, having drawn Chemistry Insight, I might have negated that, but. The ability to draw cards now is fantastic. Try to make a land drop. Perfect. Perfect. Everything is coming up. Millhouse. Let's thought erasure here. Yeah, dive down, dive down, Drake. Which works out well because we want to use our counter spells to. We could play Kaya here. Um, but if they draw exactly Terramander or Enigma Drake we would be in trouble. However, it's still pretty good. Let me just, I think we just cast it. It's a little risky, but payoff is reasonably high. So you want one spell and one creature here. Like they draw exactly the Enigma Drake and they can cast that with double dive down up. That's a problem, but... Alright, they topped and said go, that's fantastic. A shock and a creature. And I think we're gonna... What are we gonna pitch to our, our insight here? I think I should just cast the fairy. Yeah, we should cast the fairy here. He's on tap with Absorb. It's probably the game. Works for me, that's for sure. And the game starts to slip away. Usually the untapping with the fairy is usually what does it. I don't know what the time constraints are going to be on the Mythic Invitational rounds. There's going to be like a clock, or like, what's the deal? I'm just going to negate this. So obviously, with these Esper decks, primary win condition being decking your opponent with Teferi Loop. Games could go on a while, you know? Keep up the pace. Give him a little thought erasure. A little search for Ascanta. Maybe play a land. Mortify. 
sure, whatever. Doesn't really matter. Right. Life. Play that. Alright. They've had enough. They've had enough. So, Esper Control, definitely one of the best decks in the format as well. Um, again, one of the somewhat frustrating aspects of the format. Of course, Nexus of Fate was banned because it was too hard to interact with without sideboards. Esper Control does a similar thing, honestly, where you just have these Lava Coils in your deck and you, just, you need to play removal spells to beat the creature decks, but they're just dead against the Esper decks, so you're putting this Catch-22 you can't really get out of. So, um, we played essentially the Tier 1 of the format, in mono red aggro, mono white aggro, Esper control, mono blue I don't think is particularly great. Um, let's look at another more stock option here of just basic old Golgari. Um, I think Golgari seems better than Sultai in best of one because you're taking less damage in your mana base, your deck is more consistent. Um, you don't really need the overwhelming power of Hydroid Crisis because you're just trying to beat smaller aggro decks. So you can beat the smaller aggro decks with your Wild Growth Walkers and your removal spells, and then hopefully beat the control decks with your Carnage Tyrants and your Finds and stuff. So interestingly, interestingly enough, I think Golgari is actually just better than Sultai. However, it's also just a mid-range deck that's kind of mopey, and mid-range decks that are kind of mopey don't look great in best of one because all the other decks are just doing faster, more linear things. The aggro decks are much faster than you, and the control decks play a much better card advantage game than you. You're kind of in the middle, but these decks do tend to be pretty good against Mono Red. Not amazing, but pretty good against Mono Red with their Wild Growth Walkers and stuff. So, Golgari could definitely be a thing. Let's play that one next. Deck 5 here on our 10 deck tour of... Best of 1 for the Mythic Invitational starts tomorrow. Crazy. Million dollars. People are going nuts. Alright. A little awkward we don't have double green, but definitely a keep. You know, walk around two, branch walk around three. They're playing control, we got Carnage Tyrant. You know, the control decks obviously have Wrath of God or Kaya's Wrath to deal with Carnage Tyrant, but they only have so many Wraths, you know? Alright, so they're playing a white aggro deck. Our walker should be pretty good here. Cast down's good, contempt is good. Note Kali Honor Guards here. Tithe Digger, great. It's two crappy ground pounders that can't get through my 1-3. That is excellent. I'd like to find a land off this. Excellent. And now we get some. Actually, we're not going to attack, that'd be foolish. That's a pretty easy double block. We got Chupa Copper next turn. We got Carney T on the waiting in the wings. And the Tithe Taker, sure. And a landing. Alright, so we're going to Chupacabra, the, the flying creature. It's going to have flying next turn. Makes it pretty hard for them to attack and flip landing. Um, you know, looking for more explore creatures. We got kill spells and, you know, stuff's going on here. Nothing too amazing. We're not really pressuring them that much, but... I have a pretty good plan here. That is pretty good. That is a good way to flip the Allegiance Landing. So we're trying to block here and not worth jump blocking at 23 life. Snub a dub dub. Okay. Um so we can't cast contempt on their turn because the double tithe taker double tithe taker. Um, I'm almost incentivized to just cast it on our turn. Rather really cast Contempt now and then cast down later. And Contempt's the Tithe Figure. So let's cast it now. We got Carney T on the way. Keeps them down on their Ascend. And then, uh, still no good attacks, but that's fine. Snub a dub dub. They make a token and they can have a city's blessing, so definitely a reasonable board state for them. We get to cast Carnage Tyrant next turn, which is cool. Seeker Squire is nice too. 
So, Carney T. Um, you know, not the most amazing Carnage Tyrant ever, given that they can just block it with two one-drops and kill it, but of course we have Cast Down to break out double blocks. And of course Memorial Folly to get it back, and just trading off resources is fine. You know, the average power level of a card in our deck is definitely higher than theirs, so as, as the game goes on, things are good for us. That is pretty good. That is definitely pretty good. Okay. This is pretty good for us. We've cast down Squire and Branchwalker, so we're going to attack with our our Carnage Tyrant here and try and see if we can get the uh, triple, the triple block with Loxodon, Token, Token. I'm not going to not fall for it. That's fun. Um, okay. And we're going to cast our stuff... We are probably going to cast down a 4-4. Um, we'll see. Another Carnage Tyrant? That's going on top. So we could save cast down to try and use um, when they double block, if they do double block, but... We're definitely casting a Carnage Tyrant next turn, so I'm just going to use it now. Just clean up the board, but I can't cast it on their turn because Tithe Taker, so... Just kill that. Let's say go. Pretty hard board for them to, attend, them to attack into. Our creatures are reasonably large. Sure. So, riding on the wall. Typically, the green mid-range decks are good against the white decks. Uh, they just gum the ground up pretty well. So, Golgari could be an answer. It is definitely a deck that is pretty good against white aggro. It's fine against red aggro, and it's also fine against Asper. The thing is, it's fine against everything, which may not be the uh, the best place to be, but definitely an option. And we got one more deck kind of on the tier 2 range, and then our our last few decks are definitely more fringe, two of which are kind of metagame decks, and then one is a, a weird one. It's very specialized for best of one, so... Let's look at the deck, uh, the Reclamation deck. This is a deck I do not think is going to be good in um, in Best of One. This is uh, very similar to a deck that Ross Mario, my teammate, played last weekend at SCG Cincinnati in our standard seat. Definitely a good deck in Best of Three standard. Um, however, it's a deck that suffers against mono-red aggro decks, or mono-colored aggro decks, I mean. Uh, decks like White Weenie and mono-red, especially mono-red, can really get under it before it can set up. Once it gets set up, it does nasty nasty things nib it and expansion explosion for 20 and stuff like that but those early turns are tough so we're playing a main deck cannon we're playing main deck cannonades main deck it's best of one and uh some shocks and stuff to try and shore that weakness up and going a little lighter on counter spells uh but i don't expect it like, like this to do very well but it is part of the metagame let's let's give it a shot and see uh see how it looks in a game best of one wouldn't be a tour if we didn't stop everywhere You know, you can't tour Disney World and not go to... It's it's a small world. It's one of the rides there. It may not be very fun or exciting, but... Steam Vents, Rootbound Crag. I mean, this, this hand is the, the, the nut draw for this deck. The nut draw for this deck is play land on one, play Growth Spiral, extra land... And shock on turn two. So we're going to keep as we have the ability to do that. We're obviously missing a land, but. Okay. Breeding pool. So now the question is do we want to just untapped and shock here? I think we do. Don't want to let them spectacle, things like that. It's possible we should have just killed it on our turn so they can't Wizard's Lightning. It's probably would have been better, but... Okay. Rootbine Crag is perfect. So... They're actually going to make the play that I just said. Let's do it on our turn. 
So they can't wish lightning us. Obviously, trying to get a, you know, a good candidate off would be nice, but it just seems too risky. Sabotage. All right, we're going to candidate again, just main phase. Can't afford to be greedy and use your life total as a resource against Mono Red because you're just going to die. So hopefully it's you running lands here and cast Nib Mizzet. That's a pirate anyway, wouldn't die to it regardless. Alright, that's a land. We are Sinister Sabotaging essentially anything. If they play a Mons Goblin Raiders, we are Sinister, sinister Sabotaging it. Try and find our sixth land here. It is a it is a sixth land. It is a painful one, but I don't think we can afford to to not take it. So we're gonna go to seven with Nib in play and hope it's good enough. If we get to untap, we're probably okay. Daddy is home. That was my contribution to uh to Ross's matches this week last weekend in Cincinnati. Um, we, were, we were both pretty sick. I was playing my Tron deck in the B seat. And um, whenever he cast Niv Mizzet, I said, Daddy's home. That's basically all the help that I gave him. Yeah, we lost in top eight to good friends, Pete Ingram, Frank Scarron, and Steve Rubin. All right. Um, we're going to shoot them. Because this fire branch is going to shoot us anyway. And we would like to try and kill them next turn if possible, which would be very difficult, but... Yeah, it was... I mean, we're good. Now we're going to shoot the Firebrand. We're not going to kill them this turn with two lands in our hand, but we have a Counterspell, so... We're at three. We've got Nib Mizzet in play and a Counterspell, so... Walk on the razor's edge here, for sure. Okay. That's pretty good. So they have end steps, burns, end step burn spell. Main phase burn spell and which is lightning, so it's draw a card. Well now we can just kill them. So you get double expansion. Fantastic. They're probably casting this I should need to, you need to cast Sync Paper Zero here. Draw a card. Shoot you, you're dead! We stole a game! Beating Monarch with this deck is pretty tough, but that's how you do it. Just cast an Imizid on turn 6 and hope it's good enough. And draw a lot of early removal. That was also very, very important. So, I don't expect the Teamer deck to be too much of a factor, but it could be. It is pretty good against Esper. Um, the problem is the amount of shocks it needs to play to beat Mono Red and Mono White makes the Esper matchup worse than average. So, it's kind of a, a, a dark horse, but it's a deck in the format for sure. Sort of takes the spy of the Nexus decks. But now let's look at... We got a few decks left, right? So we have our Tier 1, Mono Red, Mono White, Esper Control. Tier 2, Mono Blue, Reclamation, Golgari. What about the wild cards, though? Right? Because there are some wild cards here. And, uh, oh, wait, I'm sorry. We have one more Tier 2 deck. Your White Tokens. This is the deck that uh, Zachary... I can't say pronounce his last name right. Uh, Zachary... Kine, I'm probably saying it wrong. Zach, I'm sorry, man. Uh, Zach's from, from uh, the Northeast, and he qualified via the top eight ladder. He played primarily this deck. And this deck is surprisingly good in best of one because it is very good against the monocolored aggro decks, which of course are a lot of the format. It is not great against Esper Control, but it has tools. It definitely has tools. So um, let's give this deck a spin. It's got some History Benalia, kind of fast starts with Amara. It's got some big end game in March of the Multitudes. Um, again, light on removal because you can't play too many kill spells, with three, which is only three tribunals. It's got Tristani and Shalai against Mono Red. Of course, Unbreakable Formation, another good one. So, a little soft to Goblin Chain Whirler, but pretty powerful deck overall. 
Let's give this one a shot. This is for our one of our tier two decks here. Karn, 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 Karn. Alright. It's pretty good. No one drop, but a couple good twos. Unbreakable formation. Tithe Taker gives us a little removal and Chain Roller Insurance. Right, since red is popular. Alright, we are going to. Um, so, if we lead on Migration. We can try and set up. We can try and set up for a turn three chain war, uh, unbreakable formation, just to kind of play around chain roller. But I don't have a land yet. I cast tide digger. Setting up march into formation is also pretty good. So let's let's see what they do here. We're assuming mono red. We're not sure. All right. No lands. Pretty killer. All right. Um, we're gonna attack and play another Tithe Digger. There's a Snap Block. Alright. Interesting. Definitely definitely means they could have Chain Whirler, but we need to cast our Tithe Digger. And honestly, getting to trade our Tithe Digger for their 2-drop is pretty reasonable, so... Here. As we said, Chain Whirler is good here. Ugh. Alright, well... Them's probably the breaks. They have another Chain Whirler. We are 100% dead. But without drawing a third land, we just can't play around it. So. Light up a stage is Shock Skewer the Critics. It's pretty good. Wow. Is a build your own chain whirler here? Yeah, I guess so. That's fine by me. That is also not a land. So I mean, our, our keep is definitely good, but unfortunately, if we don't draw a third land, we'll not be able to do anything. That's uh a full seven points of burn that could have gone to our face. Is there more like I'd have Frenzy, I think? Yeah, that makes more sense. Still, still no lands. I think it's pretty safe to say we're super dead here. They need to hit like six lands in a row off their Frenzy. Alright, we're going to play one more game with this deck, because that was not a very representative game of what uh, what this deck is capable of. I always said one, one match per, or one game per deck, but we didn't really play a game magic there. You can see that we played against Mono Red in a lot of these matches. Uh, Mono Red's just exceedingly popular, best of one. Okay, let's keep. Got our old flower flourish. Lanawar elves. Okay. Definitely have a hand here capable of going wide very quickly, which is good. We're we looking for a venerated loxodon or um or uh, unbreakable formation. Hmm, Golgari, okay. Solta, sure. Loxodon is a good draw. So now you get to go history into history into Loxodon and Shalai and all sorts of big stuff, which is great. They have a cast down, it's so whatever. Lebrontodon James. That's fine. They don't trade history with the. Uh, or half. Half of our history with their Brontodon is fine by me. 
Lightning's a good draw too, it's just a free card for the for Venerated Loxodon, so next turn we get to go History, Temple Garden, Landing, Loxodon. Nope, they're gonna be a little more aggressive, okay. So will they kill the history with their Brontodon? No. Okay. That's good for us. Play another history. And a landing. And a Loxodon. This venerated Loxodon is the truth. Just add a casual 9 power to the board. For free. Not too bad, you know? Not too bad. Yeah, so now the next turn we get to mush with all of our creatures. We're going to have very large creatures. The best creatures. That was pretty good, too. So now we can actually attack with everything. Yeah. Suppose we are... No, if they have finality, they would have cast it last turn, so... Alright, we, we are throwing away one creature here, possibly. To uh, the Brontodon. But this is totally fine, and if they do have finality, we just have a Shalai and a Flip Legion's Landing. So... They're also about to take eight, a lot of damage. All right, so finality or bust. Sonny also provides a little insurance against a uh, hostage taker. Which is cute. Alright, they have finality. So, we could just cast Migration. We could wait, we could kick it next turn. Uh, I think we're just gonna cast it. I don't want to take this 5 damage here, if possible. They have a Vivian too, we're having trouble, so this is going to attack Vivian. This also means I can start activating Shalai immediately. I think Tristani was a little too aggressive. I mean, they didn't have finality the previous turn, so... It felt like they just didn't have it, but they just didn't even need to cast Rastani. A crisis here would be bad too. Yeah. Yeah, it's not too good. Um. Yeah. All right. That's kind of brutal. Uh, we, we probably shouldn't have cast Tristani, I guess. It just wasn't worth it. Let them draw out, let the, let them draw out on us. Um, we hold Tristani, play it post, post finality. We have, we have, we have Tristani in play right now with two other tokens. Yeah, he probably would have won this game. Alright. Kind of stinky, but. So, yeah, Green White's definitely, um, a deck that's, again, better against the monocolor decks than it is against the mid-range decks, but hence why it's kind of cool in best of one. But, so that's your, your tier one. Tier one, mono red, Esper control, mono white. Tier two, Slesnia tokens, team reclamation, Golgari mid-range. You could throw maybe like Gruul aggro or something in there. But there's a, there's a few other decks here too. So this is one of the, the only real best of one decks. It's been like a best of one deck. You know, it's a deck that's only existed in best of one, essentially. This is a 
Esper variant. It is a Dovin's Acuity based Esper control deck based around the draft common or uncommon Dovin's Acuity. Three mana, draw a card, gains you life. Or you play an instant, get it back in your main phase. And a lot of anti aggro stuff here in Revitalize, Moment of Craving, Nightmare's Thirst. It's a wild one. Cry the Carnarium, Kaya's Wrath. Um, the MO of this deck is that it crushes the creature, creature decks and it cannot beat Esper Control. But if you're looking to win a tournament, you know, you can just say to yourself, listen, I can't beat Esper Control, but I'll beat everything else. So if I get paired against not Esper Control, I'm going to win, you know, a quarter of a million dollars. And then occasionally, you know, you, you do have a loss to give here and there. Uh, I believe it's best double elimination. So definitely an interesting option for a, 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 a format like the Mythic Championship where winning is just so important, you know, like in and taking that risk where if you can just dodge that one bad matchup, maybe you win the whole tournament is super worth it. So this is a cool deck. I've not actually played this deck before. I'm looking forward to trying it. Also, we have a sideboard because we have Masterminds Acquisition. Another cute card here in Best of One. Um, allows you to find answers for things you wouldn't have in your main deck um, and sort of have a sideboard in general. So we have a uh, 15 different cards here, good in different scenarios. We can search for Wrath of Gods and Negates and stuff. So pretty cool deck. Um, let's give it a try. This is a deck that I actually have not played before. I'm kind of looking forward to trying out here. So no Esper Control. Um, yeah, it seems fine. It's not great, but... Alright, no Esper Control. Alright, we're going to opt. Let's see if we find that one mana removal spell. Oh, we don't. Don't want that. Okay. And we have all pain-free lands for the next few turns. We have a Wrath, we have a Life Gain on 2, Wrath on 3. Uh, if their hand is really good, they might overrun us, because we need to have 4 lands in our hand, but we'll see how it goes. Light up a stage for Frenzy and a 1-drop. So that's pretty good, because I can't cast the Frenzy, so... A Nightmare's Thirst. So... This card is pretty cool with our acuity. It's not killing anything at the moment, but that is quite good. So moment of craving, nightmares thirst will kill some stuff. We have our wrath also, so yeah, our wrath looks pretty good here. So, Wrath away, and then next turn, hopefully we'll gain some life off these cards, and our acuity and stuff, and see if we can just keep rolling. Chain Whirler, that is annoying. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Now we're, now we're in great shape. So, Revitalize, also really cool. So... We get to... Can't, can't, can't recast the QD of this turn. We need to kill some stuff, but get to Moment of Craving, the Lava Runner, bounce our Dovin's Acuity. And we get to Nightmare's Thirst, the Chain Whirler. And then I guess just say go and revitalize. We'll just end step it. Could try and save it for acuity. We have other instants to cast, so I think we're actually like miles ahead this game. Who would have thought gaining life is good against mono red? You know, it's weird. Cool. So pretty cool deck. Um, you can imagine that being basically any aggro deck, which casts wrath on four and gains some life and kills some creatures, and and bam. We're right in it. So that's a cool deck to look out for. Um, people think that uh, they can avoid the Esper Control Menace. It's a nice little gambit. It's a pretty cool one. But there's one type of deck left that is uh, 
is available also. And that is like the pure metagame deck. So if those have read my articles or watched my stream, um, when I was doing my initial Bronze to Mythic in the first season, uh, I messed around a lot with like green-white angels and green-white life gain and stuff because Monterey was just so popular to the point where we were playing, we were playing Exali's Diviner in our deck just to, as another explore creature and blocker. And we kind of cheesed our way up through beating Mono Red pretty easily, which is pretty cool. And this is a deck, this is actually a BBD's deck, uh, Brian Braun doing. And deck he's played a lot on Arena. This is just a Selesnia Angels deck. So basically just hell bent on beating the aggro decks of the format. You know, Wild Growth Walker and Branch Walker and Jade Light, and then Lyras and Shalai's and Resplendent Angels, and not much game otherwise. Main deck Knight of Autumn. Only two actual kill spells and Ixalan's Binding. And then Vivian Reed can also kill things like Frenzy while also being card advantage. Um, against control decks, you're definitely not favored, but at least all of your cards are threats, which is good. Uh, some impulses to put all together. Very simple deck. Um, sort of like the anti-cheese deck, you know, where they're trying to Zergling rush you, you just, you just build a wall and build some cannons or something. So uh, this is definitely a kind of metagame deck people could, play, people could play. Um, it's an option. Anti mono red is definitely, or anti aggro in general is definitely a reasonable strategy. Let's, let's try this out. This is the best of one angels deck. That is deck number nine here on our 10 deck tour of best of one. Getting pumped up for the mythic invitational tomorrow. That's a hand. Light of Autumn's pretty good, too. It's flexible enough. It's powerful enough where it's fine, and flexible enough where it's pretty good. Alright. Um, so the question here is, do we play? What, what do we do with this knight? They're playing Mono Red. If we gain life, it just ends up, get, ends up gets, getting a, swept up in a Chain Whirler chain. Make it a 4-3. It just dies to a Lightning Strike. Um, I think we're just going to gain the life. Knight of Autumn is being put on the stack. I'll we'll just take the guaranteed life here. Make sure you time to draw into Lyra. Maybe it's pretty nice too. Alright, so we're going to play Shalai and just hope they don't have Chain Whirler. Please no on the Chain Whirler. I guess if they have Chain Lord, we, we get to Binding it, which is pretty good. Ugh. Cool. Hmm. Alright, we are not going to be blocking with our Shalai, so we're just going to attack with it. No more Chain Whirlers ever! Eh, Steamkin's pretty good too. Of course, one of the downsides to playing no removal is that, you know, the steam can kind of run wild here. Wow, they're going to double spell to kill my Shalai? Sure. Alright, we can't cast Vivian because they just play one spell, they can attack and kill it, so... Speed Light says, Forest Wild Growth Walker. Wild Growth Walker with no friends. It's kind of a tough sell. I guess the Vivian Plus will help us find a friend. Alright, we'll leave this on top. Next turn we have Vivian Plus. Even if they kill if they kill the Vivian, it's at least gained some life and trying to find a friend with this Wild Growth Walker. It's pretty good. Where my Lyra at? That's the sad part too, is that these decks just lose to Mono Red sometimes, which is kind of embarrassing almost. Um, because they're literally, you know, they seem built to beat Mono Red. 
When I was building my green white decks, I didn't like Resplendent Angel. I preferred to have some removal spells, but that does make you worse against uh worse against the control deck, so I get it. Yes, there's Lyra. So they know our hand. We're playing face up here, but they only have one card, so the ability to double spell and kill Lyra is not oh, that is that is so aggressive. They would go for the lightning strike there. They only get to attack us to four, and I'm playing Lyra. That is very, very aggressive. Another Lyra. Alright. Well. Meet my newest friend. Branch Walker is nice, but I think we just take the land here so we can play Lyra and Walker. If they go runner, runner, burn spell to kill us, say la vie. It's kind of weird, weird spacing here. <laughs> and there's exhibit A of why Mono Red is so good in this format. Even the deck that's literally built to beat it can't beat it. So, Mono Red, real, real good. All right, our last deck is a deck that I have written about and played a, a very good amount. This was um, the deck I used to try and make top eight mythic. I finished around like, I mean, I finished in like top 200, but I, I, I was peaking at around 50, uh, playing best of one, trying to game it. Uh, I wrote an article on cool stuff about it. I did a video about it. Um, this was my attempt at trying to metagame, you know, so we, we know a lot of players are playing mono red. But we also need to beat the Esper Control decks. This is my my take at it. Uh, this started out initially as a an Orzhov Angels deck, similar to our previous deck, but the Angels were just too bad and too slow, as you saw in that game. So I wanted to be a little more low to the ground. Also, I wanted a chance to beat Esper Control. And this deck, obviously, we have some dead cards against Esper. These cast downs are dead. But Mortify can at least hit uh, a Search for Escanta here and there. And then Fungal Infection, you can at least just target your own Knight of Malice to get a 1-1. To get and then the 1-1 one, one can be pumped up by a Johnny and Venerated Loxodon and stuff. So it has a, a very good chance of beating Esper while also being very good against Mono Red. We have four Basilica Bell Haunt, a card that's very, very good against Mono Red. It's good against Mono Card Aggro decks in general. Uh, History of Benalia, Ith Taker, you know, Bodyguard, Legion's Landing. Knight of Malice is, our, is basically a 3-2 first striker for two at all times, which is great. Kai is great against the Mono Card Aggro decks. Good against Esper, just a good card. And I mean, we needed some things to size up to beat the white decks and the more mid-rangey decks. And a Johnny, which is fantastic against Esper, does that very well. And then two Venerated Loxodons look a little weird in our deck because, like, we're not playing as many one-drops and creatures. But as far as ways to size you up in the mid-game, Loxodon's great. Occasionally, you just draw, you know, double one-drop, two-drop, two-drop history and have an insane Loxodon hand. And then, but a lot of the time, this is just going to be, you know, pumping up your creatures a little bit in the mid-game. And uh, stabilizing the board, things like that. So this is, I guess, like a lot. Um, played a good amount with this deck. Kind of a cool metagame deck. Something like this could be pretty cool. Uh, again, looking to sort of gain the system and try and beat the mono red decks while also having game elsewhere. So our last game of the video with uh, with my baby here. Let's see, let's see if we can win this one. I played this deck a lot, trying to grind into the Mythic Invitational. Um, again, I peaked around like 60, I floated in the hundreds for a while, but eventually just couldn't get there. It's just too hard. I didn't start early enough, honestly. I just didn't give myself enough time. So mono red again, please. Okay, so sand's fine. We're going to keep. Fungal Inflection is fantastic in early defense. And then if, we're play if they're playing if they're playing Esper Control, we at least have some game that there too. So we're gonna keep Steam Vents, of course. Uh, they're probably pretty unlikely to play at one toughness creature to play at that blend. Jeskai Drakes, not a common best of one deck, but. Of course, that's part of the format, is understanding that you're not always going to play against things you want to play against. And so part of it is being able to bring a deck that is good against the decks you expect while also being fine otherwise. Right. 
discarding Justice Strike, and now discarding... Like, we're going to resolve Kaya here, and then play back-to-back -back Bell Haunt. We're actually in reasonable shape here, though. So they're playing Drakes. They're playing Enigma Drake. So... Kaya will definitely have some utility, exiling spells from the graveyard. Still going to hit the creature, though, just for uh, a little life gain value. And it's Bell Haunt time. Crackling Drake is very good here. Alright, Enigma Drake. Good. Alright, let's give him the little Bell Haunt business. This card is very good. I know this card was uh, maligned early on for being one of the weaker parts of the cycle, but it's actually very, very good. Alright, now we're gonna exile two spells. Keep this Enigma Drake under control. Seems doubtful to be able to deal 5 to my Kaya next turn. It's good. Run healthy life total. We got another Bell Haunt coming. Fungal Infection on a block here is cool. Infections also are just cool in combat with your first strikers and stuff. The card's pretty good. Doesn't really, doesn't really do much though, I guess. Like. So draw them two cards. We get to attack it with our bell haunts and stuff. Sure. Nope. No attacks at all. That's fantastic, because now they're going to block and we get to Fungal Infection and kill their Ralzar, which is awesome. So, let's just start there. Tricks, tricks, tricks. And we get another bell haunt. I should have played. I should have cast this first before they discarded a card. That was that was bad sequencing, but it's fun. Right, so there's a crackling Drake. Which they're probably gonna block with again. Drake obviously very good against Kaya because it counts the exiles cards, exiled cards too. This discounts exile too. I didn't know that. Okay. It's kind of pain. All right. Well, we'll go for the attack on Rail again. We'll see what they do. It is on three, so they hopefully block my bell haunt. All right, got him again. I guess we actually just uh, indestructible here. There's no point in not letting the damage happen first. So we'll do that, and then fungal afterwards after the damage has already been dealt. Yep, dive down. That suck. All right. Well, that's bad. Because now Arkaya is probably dead. Could ultimate it to deal six and gain six, but it doesn't seem like it's really going to matter too much. This Ralz Eric is really wrecking us, uh, wrecking our day here. Uh, we are a little soft to resolve Planeswalkers, but a card like Conclave Tribunal. <sighs> However, if they want to attack my, my Planeswalker, they can't defend their Planeswalkers easily, so let's see what they do here. I'll be back. Oh my god, Daddy's home. Alright, we're dead. Yeah, we, we would need to draw Mortify exactly this turn. Otherwise, we're dead. So, definitely not a great matchup for us. Um, you know, we could play against Mono Red this game. Whew! We would have crushed him. But, uh, yeah, Crackling Drake, Nib Mizzet, Ral uh, Ral Zarek, not the cards we're looking to play against this deck. And that's kind of the, that is kind of the fear of playing a metagame deck, where if you are trying to target a certain deck in the metagame, you just don't play against those decks, you can be out real quick, too. So, 
It's tough. It is a tough world out there in best of one. It is it's pretty scary. Um but we're gonna see what everyone does with it, honestly. I'm super excited. I'll be at PAX East hanging out. Uh, me, Nicole, and John are going all four days. Uh, Twitch hooks up its partners with uh, with media badges, which is pretty cool. And um, so I'll be there watching, and I'm super excited. And you should be too, because this is the biggest event to happen to Magic in a very, very long time. And if these sorts of esports events keep happening, that's just awesome. It's really, really cool. So hope you enjoyed this uh, little tour here of Best of One in preparation for the Mythic Invitational. If you're going to be at PAX, make sure you say hi. Um, otherwise, I'm sure you enjoy watching online. And if you if you're if you're if you like it, share it. This event needs to be huge. If this if this, if this event is as huge as it seems like it's going to be, it's going to be really really good for Magic. So I'm super pumped, and you should be too. So I'll be back to my normal time normal time slot next Monday. It's my usual Monday video. Otherwise, uh, article every Friday, video Monday, and check out CoolStuffInc.com for all your shopping needs. For watching on YouTube. There's a written compendium article to this as well as the video itself. And you can also use promo code JIM5 for 5% off your next order on CoolStuffInc.com. I'll see you fine folks later. Mythic Invitational, get hyped.